about a decade ago, two British researchers, Paul Black and Dylan William, reported results of a comprehensive review of research focused on classroom assessments. Their results indicated, without equivocation, that if classroom assessment were used formatively, that is, to help make adjustments in teachers' instruction or in students' learning tactics, students would learn better what was taught in class. Put simply, classroom formative assessment works, and the research reported by the two Brits confirmed it. In contrast to formative assessment, whose focus is on using assessment for learning, there's also summative assessment, and it most definitely is designed to be an assessment of learning. Whereas formative assessment intends to improve ongoing instruction, summative assessment tries to answer the question, was instruction effective? Today's accountability tests, of course, are summative in nature. Educators find themselves obliged to give their students numerous summative standardized tests. That's because an incredulous public wants to know if its tax-supported schools are effective. Although many educators grouse publicly about the need to be scrutinized by accountability tests, thoughtful educators will concede privately that those who pay for an enterprise have the right to see if it's working. Summative tests are surely destined to be with us for a long, long while. Happily, formative assessment, a process intended to improve the quality of students' learning, is currently being endorsed with considerable enthusiasm by increasing numbers of individuals and organizations. Yet, not all the tests now being marketed by commercial testing firms do in fact coincide with the sorts of classroom testing reviewed by Black and William. Teachers need to be able to distinguish legitimate formative assessments from fraudulent ones. Teachers also need to be able to identify whether certain kinds of summative assessments are suitable for use in an accountability program. That is, whether those tests are sufficiently sensitive to instructional impact so that they can be employed to distinguish between effective and ineffective instruction. You can learn more about formative and summative assessment by spending time with one or more of the resources identified here. The formative-summative distinction is a key one, and you need to comprehend it completely.